If you've ever wanted to play bridge or hearts or spades, you need to know what a trick-taking game is. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you the basics of a trick-taking game, as well as advanced strategies. By the end of this video, you'll know how to play any trick-taking game. Hey everybody, welcome to Puzzling Games. As you know, on this channel, I teach a lot of how-to videos, card games, video games, Rubik's Cubes, puzzles, you name it. Now normally I do these tutorials on an app, but I'm gonna use a deck of cards because in fact, what I wanna do is I'm gonna play face up, which is the best way to learn trick-taking games. Usually a trick-taking game is played with four people. The other important thing to know about trick-taking games is you usually use 52 cards, the entire deck. And the reason is because a trick-taking game strategy is really the strategy of using all the cards, not just one trick at a time. See, after I've dealt the cards, that I've gone ahead and laid them out a certain way. And what I've done is I've organized them by suits, putting all the clubs together, the spades together, the hearts together, the diamonds together. And then within every suit, I broke it down further into lowest to highest. When you're playing a trick-taking game, that is how you want to organize your cards. With that though, let's start with learning what a trick is. <laughs> I dealt to all four people, and that is me here, somebody across from me. Sometimes when you play in partners, you play this person, and then these two people would be partners, or maybe it's a four-person game. And so here are the rules, and then we're going to walk through a few hands. The way it works is somebody leads with a card, and depending on what card I lay down, in a clockwise motion, we need to go around and everybody else needs to lay down a card. Whatever card I've, I've led with, for example, whatever suit it is, if I laid down a diamonds, a spades, a heart, or a club, everybody must lay down the same suit if they have it. And if they don't have it, they can lay down another suit, but that's basically just throwing away that card. Um, there is something called a trump, which I'll get into in a second in this video. But everybody lays down the suit, whatever I led, whatever the leader led, suit the, whatever suit the leader leads with, everyone must follow suit, lay down that same suit. The person who laid down the, with the highest number or the value is the winner. Aces are high, then it goes down normally kings, queens, jacks, tens, twos being the lowest. So for example, if I was to play a nine of hearts here, everybody, if they have a heart, must play it. I see this guy, I'm, and by the way, I'm playing, I've just turned them all up. Normally you don't see what your opponents have in their hands, but this is for tutorial purposes only, of course. They have hearts here. I see they have hearts here. I see they have a few hearts here. Everybody must be forced to play a heart. It doesn't matter what they play. They could play a high heart or a low heart, but the person with the highest heart, after everybody has gone around and laid down one card, that person wins that trick. And by winning that trick, they then get to lead by laying down the next card. And at that point, they can choose to lay down, of course, any of the cards they want to lead with. There's a benefit to leading because everybody has to follow suit. And if they don't have your card, they're basically throwing a card away. Now, all of this leads to incredible strategy, a little bit of which we're going to get to later on in this video. And so to do a sample here, I'll lay down a card. I'll lay down a king of diamonds. Well, all these people have diamonds. So he must lay down one of his diamonds, this guy on the left here. He can put down a two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Well, obviously, since the person who has, lays the highest diamond wins the trick, and he has a higher diamond, he'll lay that one down. This person over here only has one diamond. It's a queen. He must lay down his one and only diamond. And here they have five, six, and seven diamonds they can lay down. And we're going to get into this in a second. You know, a, a simple strategy for this person would be, I'm not going to win. I don't, I don't have the highest diamond. So if I have to throw down a diamond, I don't want to throw down my jack. I'll throw down my lowest diamond. So this guy would win the trick. One thing you want to do in trick-taking games is memorize what's been played. So if I'm this guy and I have a jack of diamonds, I would look and say, you know what? A king's been played, a queen's been played, an ace has been played. This jack of diamonds is now the highest diamond in the game. So on the next turn, even though it's this guy's turn to play, if he then says, well, I'll lay down a diamond, this guy has no diamonds, so he has to throw away a card. Let's say, so he just throws away a card. This guy now knows, hey, if I play my jack of diamonds, I'm going to win because there is no higher diamond. And sure enough, I've got only one diamond left and he's going to now win that trick and so forth. And if the person who was paying attention goes, well, now we've played the jack, the 10 and the nine, 
this person might know, I've now got the highest diamond. Confused? Don't worry, we're gonna keep going through it. But that is the basics of trick taking. But there is something we have to get into now before we go any farther. And that's called the Trump suit. So I've reshuffled and redealt the cards, reorganized the cards, as I said, into the four suits, and then within every suit, from lowest to highest, ace being the highest. Now we're gonna talk about Trump cards. One of the things that you just saw in the previous trick-taking thing was that very simply, you lay down a suit, the person who has the highest in that suit wins, and if you don't have it, you lay down any other card and it's an automatic loser. However, some games have what they call a trump suit, and what that means is it's a suit. It could be, if it's hearts, it's hearts. If it's the game spades, it's spades. If it's bridge, it can be any of them, but the idea is is that there is a suit that if you were to play it, it is higher than any other card that is not that suit. So if the suit, for example, was a club and somebody laid down an ace of hearts, but you laid down even the lowest club, a two of clubs, but the trump suit was clubs, this two would trump that heart, even if the lead, even if that was the lead card even if it doesn't matter. The Trump card trumps all the other suits. Now, if everyone's laying down the same Trump suit, then it is the highest Trump card. Part of the reason that people like trumping Trump suits is because there's a lot of strategy, which we're gonna get into in a second, on trumping. If there is a Trump suit, you cannot just cleanly play the Trump suit because you feel like it. First of all, if somebody lays down a card and you have the suit that they're playing, so if I was to lay down, say, this diamond, you and and the, and there was a and there was a Trump suit of clubs, they can't just play clubs just to beat my jack of diamonds. If they have diamonds, they must follow suit. If they have diamonds, they must follow suit. If they have diamonds, they have two here, they must follow suit. The Trump card comes into play when somebody doesn't have the lead card's suit. If you look over here, this guy has some clubs He's got some diamonds. He has one spade. He actually has no hearts. So let's say the Trump suit was spades and I laid down a heart, but the Trump suit is spades. Everyone has to play a heart, but he doesn't have a heart because he has no heart. He either has the option of throwing, a, putting any card he wants down, which is throwing it away. But if there's a Trump suit, and in this case, I'm saying that the spade is the Trump suit, he could lay down his Trump suit card and now no matter what it's trumped my lead card but these people still have to follow suit with the with the lead card if they have it so because this guy has a heart he'd have to play a heart and because these guys have a heart they'd have to play a heart but it wouldn't matter because the trump suit beat all of them now he wins that trick now he's in control now, one more thing you need to know about that is in most Trump-taking games, and there, there may be some that are the exception, but none that I know of offhand, you can't just randomly play a Trump card until the suit has been broken. And what I just showed you is breaking the suit. If the Trump suit is spades, as I had mentioned, I can't just decide to lay down a spade to lead off the game. You can't lead off with a Trump until the Trump suit has been broken. So I can't actually play one of these spades if spades is the Trump suit until uh, somebody has laid down a card, run out of that suit, played the Trump suit as I just showed you. So that's an important distinction. You can't randomly lay that down. Now, because of this guy laid down his queen and won with his queen, he now controls, he now could lay down any trump card he wanted to and now moving forward if i was to gain control i could lead with trump cards they could lead with trump cards etc confused don't be because we're going to keep going into this next part talk about some basic strategies remember you don't know what's in anyone else's hands we're playing right now with all the cards face up so you can see but in reality you don't know if i laid down this club who else has clubs in their hands or who might have a trump or you know because they don't have clubs etc and i just want to make a few other points on this there's 13 cards here in everybody's hand 13 times 4 is 52 it's the full deck so every card in a deck is represented once 
You don't have to worry about whether or not a card is in somebody's hand. If you don't have it, somebody else does have it. Yes, somebody does. You don't know who has it. But that's what leads me to my next important thing, which is knowing what's been played is the strategy of the game. They say that bridge is an excellent game for people as they get older because it keeps their mind sharp. That's the reason, because you actually have to watch what's being played and remember what's been played. So you're ultimately needing to kind of put all 52 cards in your mind at the same time to know what's been played and what hasn't. Which leads me to the next thing, which is don't look at a trick where everyone lays down one card and somebody wins the trick individually. Usually these games are played by everyone playing all 13 cards, meaning 13 rounds, 13 tricks, and then you add up the tricks to see who got the most tricks. It's not realistic to look at it and try to win every single trick. There is a strategy about how you might want to give up a trick to gain control. And many of the trick-taking games, if you want to watch my videos on how to play, for example, bridge or spades, it's about bidding how many tricks that you think you can win. And that's a really interesting thing because it's not just about winning the tricks. It's about guessing how many tricks you can win and then playing the game in such a way that you either get it or you don't. So don't think of it as individual tricks you're trying to win each time. You want to start thinking of it as a round of 13 tricks and over the course of 13, you just want to come out ahead and be the one with the most wins of the 13 tricks or how many you've predicted if it's one of those bidding games. But this is the basics of all trick-taking games. Hope you learned something. And if you're interested in learning bridge or cribbage or canasta or spades or hearts, if you want to learn backgammon, mancala, if you want to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, learn how to win at Clue, checkers, chess, everything that I teach is for free on this channel, definitely check out my channel. If you want to go ahead and support me, I really would appreciate it so I can keep going. You can become a member. You can go to my website for more videos and for some products I recommend, Christmas gifts and things. And if you want to even play with me one-on-one, -on -one, it's a little expensive, but if you sign up, I'll play cards with you one-on-one -on -one online. That's all, folks.